fun. Hey everyone, Mad Martial Arts, hope you're doing okay. Uh, this is another VidMe exclusive, I hope you enjoy it. Today, we're going to be asking the question, do martial arts teach humility? Now, there's a common mantra among martial artists of all shapes and sizes that martial arts will humble you. And it, I think it's funny because you could go into just about any gym and they will repeat that. And a lot of the times in those gyms, they are harboring people who are not very humble. Um, if martial arts will teach you humility, why do people like War Machine and Bobby Joe Blythe exist? Why, why do they exist? What makes them tick? Uh, I have seen many demonstrations. I've seen many fights. I've partaken in a couple of fights. Uh, and I've done many different martial arts. And no matter where I go, there always seems to be one person who will kind of ruin that saying. Uh, for instance, I was on the martial arts Reddit, as I usually am, and I saw a board-breaking demonstration by a karateka. And he ended up kicking one of his students. This was a 70-something-year-old 70 instructor who was breaking boards, and apparently one of the boards did not break because the student wasn't holding it the correct way or something like that. And when he finally does break the board, he kicks his student. This is an instructor. Uh, another more personal example. Uh, I went to the same gym for about five years, and there was this one guy who I believe is still going there, he was there for three years when I was there. Out of the five years I was there, he was there for three. And many of the times that he would roll, he would always, really every time he would roll, he would always go way too hard. He would try to rip your arm off. He would try to crush your windpipe. He would try to smother you. And whenever he would lose and it was usually against someone who was more his size because he was six foot four 220 pounds but whenever he would lose or most of the time anyway he would slam the mat he would get up he'd swear he'd walk off he'd come back looking like an idiot uh there was one time where he actually tried muay thai and he got swept now i don't know how this got by the instructors but he had a broken arm. Uh, he tried to break the fall with his broken arm. And he gets up, he starts swearing, he walks off, and he starts talking about how he wants to fight the guy who swept him. That's not very humble. And he was doing this for at least three years. There, there can be any number of these people at a gym for any length of time. And one, one place I find it to be incredibly annoying is stand-up, because that's really, really where injury can occur. You have that guy that it doesn't matter what the instructor says. The instructor could say to put out your fingers and poke each other for sparring, and they would be going 110% every time. What happens with these people is they don't understand the training process. They don't understand that they're supposed to be getting better. They assume that because they get a couple of good hits off one of the on one of the top fighters at the gym, or they assume that because they submit one of the top fighters at the gym, that they are getting better, when in fact, they're not. Uh, this attributes to their ego because they walk off knowing, yeah, I hit him really hard. Yeah, I pulled that arm bar extra hard and he tapped right away. I'm better than him. I am the best. I am better than other people. I could do that to anyone. Um, it really, in my opinion, all comes down to how you're going to use it. And it comes down to the individual. I believe there are people who are kind of, I guess you could say, predestined to be humbled by martial arts. And there are some people who will not benefit from martial arts, at least not in that 
manner. Um, hence, people like War Machine, someone who was fighting for Bellator, Bobby Joe Blythe, someone who owned his own school for a long time and had plenty of students. Um, one thing that can happen is someone starts a martial art and they just it just clicks. They're good. You know, they progress very well. And when they're put up against competition, they do extremely well. They win most, if not all of their fights, matches, whatever you would call it. And that attributes to their ego as well. I know plenty of people just in my region who think that they are 110% the absolute shit because on paper, their record is good. And every win just attributes to their ego. I don't think that those people would be as egotistical if they had a record that rested around 500. I don't believe so. There are people who win a lot all the time that are very humble and good people. But there are also a lot of people who win and think that that means they are better. Uh, one thing to ask too, and one, one thing to consider is when you are arguing with someone, right? The base, pretty much everyone knows that you're not just supposed to knock someone the hell out, whether you're trained or untrained. Everyone knows that it is not acceptable to just be punching people in the face. I know not to punch you in the face, but does it mean that I'm sitting here trying to be as humble as possible. You could be calling me a bitch and just because I don't punch you in the face doesn't mean I'm not going to sit here and call you a bitch back. Am I really humble if I'm sitting here thinking about how I could beat the living shit out of you and how that makes me better than you? Am I really that much better than you? Because truthfully, that's probably what you're thinking about me. And it makes not only me look bad, but it makes other martial artists look bad if I'm going to sit here and start mouthing off because I know that I could back it up. That's something funny people say. Oh, don't talk shit if you can back it up. Eh, you probably just shouldn't talk shit to begin with, you know? And that's the attitude that a lot of people will have is, oh, well, I back it up. So that means I'm allowed to talk shit. And I don't necessarily like that. You know, it's one thing to acknowledge that you're good. Like I'll sit here and tell someone, yes, I, I believe that I'm pretty good at jujitsu. I believe I'm a pretty good grappler. I believe that I'm pretty good at stand up. But it's another thing when I'm sitting here saying I am the best. I am better than you. A lot of people compare themselves to other people, and that is how their ego inflates. That's part of why competition can inflate the ego, because they are comparing themselves to someone else. They are com they're competing with other people instead of competing with themselves to see if they're going to get better. Um, it really, really all comes down to the individual. If you're not going to use martial arts to humble yourself, you're not going to become more humble. There's a lot of people out there who will do martial arts just because they want to beat up the school bully. There's a lot of people out there who will do martial arts because they think it'll get them the girls. And let me tell you guys, martial arts don't get you girls. I'll be honest with you. Martial arts gets you girls that want you to beat up everyone. You know, they don't get you the girl that you want. They get you the girl that thinks you're just going to beat everyone up that she points to. Martial arts is something that you, you get out of it, whatever you're searching for. And if you want to be humbled by martial arts, well, then you need to be searching for that humility within martial arts. If you're not going to search for the humility, you're not going to find it. And that is why people like the guy from my gym exist, because he's not searching for humility. He is searching for, okay, how can I beat the black belt today? That's really all that I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this VidMe exclusive. If you enjoyed it, a like, comment, share, follow would be greatly appreciated. And thank you.